Hi, I'm Tom Barker. I'd like to show you how I was able to mount Thule's elevator system on our van. You will need to attach the load bars to plates of metal called artificial rain gutters. Thule's inch and a half bolts are too short to reach into the inner shell of the van. You will need to purchase two and a half and three inch bolts that are long enough to reach into the interior of the van. I use quarter 20 bolts with washers and lock washers. The whole size is quarter inch. The black backer plate supplied with the 542 kit is okay for the rear of the van, but in the front you will need to use large washers as a backer since one bolt is in the storage cabinet and the other is in the front, just outside the cabinet. You will need to remove the microwave oven to access the passenger side rear installation. Chinook uses a double back tape in addition to the six Torx head screws that hold the microwave trim in place. It takes a bit of prime to get the trim off. Be careful not to dent the surrounding wood. Back outside, we can see the positioning of each foot on the artificial rain gutter. I have them as far apart from the front to back as is possible given the TV antenna, which can't be raised when the kayak is on top, and the air conditioning unit. Make sure you position the rear load bar just ahead of the refrigerator vent. This may allow the TV antenna to just clear the load bar on the other side. Now that we have the lateral positioning from front to back, let's look at the up and down location. The vertical positioning is important to allow the long foot that holds the load bar to angle in properly and not be stopped by the top of the roof. This foot comes in the 387 kit and should be ordered with the 78 inch maximum length load bars as an option in this kit. Since the van has curved surfaces, it is impossible to get a good reference point to begin measurement. I placed a piece of wood on the top of the van and measured from there. The quarter inch hole has a center two and a quarter inches from the top of the van. Again, be careful in making this measurement. Since if you get down too low, the foot will not fit since it will be stopped by the roof edge. If you go up too high, you will not enter the interior of the van at the point you can access. The passenger side front hole is especially a problem since there is only a small area that can be accessed. Notice that the kayak can, does not cover the solar panel. One of the elevators is a one time operation. Now let's see how to use them on the nine foot high van. Realize that the elevators were designed for an ordinary vehicle and unless you are as tall as an NBA basketball player, you will need a vertical assist. The two step kitchen stool is quite sufficient. This one is available in Walmart for about $12. While this picture shows two stools, we have found one is sufficient and takes up less storage in the passenger side compartment where it just fits. To dismount the kayaks from the van, first remove the locking pin with the lanyard. You will need to make a strap to help pull the kayak down as we shall see in a moment. The strap is made from a 10 foot section of tie down webbing, you can get that from your kayak dealer, with an additional 3 foot section spliced in as shown. After the locking pins are removed, I put 3 section strap into the elevator's handle. One of the 3 foot section goes behind the release lever and the other behind the outer handle. When you pull the release handle, you unlock the catches. Pulling on the outer handle allows the catch to engage and lock the kayak in the down position. This is a two-person job. I take the upper part and the end is on the ground. I find it easier to unlatch the locking catches from above rather than trying to use the strap. Since the weight of the kayak will re-engage the catch, it is necessary to shim the elevator in the open position while you unlock the other end. I do this with the loose end of the tie-down strap. It takes some fiddling to make this happen. With the back unlocked and shimmed, I unlock the front and tie the kayak to a 90 degree position. There it's being tipped. Anne can now pull on the strap attached to the release lever while I give a push outward. Due to the weight of the kayak, there's not enough leverage to do this from the ground using the strap without the top side assist. With the catch is released, Anne pulls the kayak out and down with the strap attached to the outer hull, or the outer handle. This takes some stretches and careful positioning to be able to handle both straps at once. 
As you do this a few times, you will gain experience. Here it comes. Now Anne removes the straps as I come down from above. The tight on straps are removed. I need to stand on the stool to be able to reach the tight on straps. We have a storage bag for all of the straps so that they don't get lost. Notice that I remove the front tie down after removing the other tie downs. Don't do that. It is possible that the kayak can jar loose and fall to the ground. So do as I say, not as I do. Remove the front tie down before removing the middle tie down straps. I position myself on the step stool in the middle of the kayak such that I can easily lift the kayak from the saddles. But not so close that when it angles out in front of me, I am pushed off the stool. So I push it back to free it from the front saddle and then lift it out of the front saddle. Anne takes the front and I give her a verbal cue to step forward. We found it by saying, step and then feeding the kayak to her, we are coordinated and I do not push the kayak onto her. When the kayak is ready to come out from the rear saddle, I move my stool, telling it, of course, and out it comes. The whole operation takes about 10 minutes for each kayak. To load the kayaks, just reverse the operation. The strap and the elevator handle are not necessary.